So let me first talk about uh, compactness. Huh? So I mean we are looking on continuous functions on a compact set and uh, yeah, we have seen compactness in the context uh, of normed vector spaces. Uh, that, that we had, I mean, uh, yeah, a set is con compact if every sequence in this set uh, contains a convergent uh, subsequence, converging to something uh, in this set. Okay, but uh, actually, um, compactness and many notions we encounter uh, can also be extended to more general settings. Huh? And I mean, we want to prove uh, this stone weierstrass theorem in the most general setting. Huh? Okay, so actually uh, from, yeah, let's say, I mean, so what, what we have looked at up to now were normed vector spaces. Uh, so we have usually a linear structure, an addition, and scalar multiplication, and we have a norm. Uh, okay, but the norm usually is mainly used for defining a distance between two points, uh, by taking the norm of the difference between two points. So actually, normed vector spaces, uh, I mean, the main information which we use for them, for many arguments, uh, an analytic arguments, are actually that we get a distance, uh, or maybe more, f yeah, more formally, such a thing is called a metric. Uh, so actually, normed vector spaces are metric spaces. And then, furthermore, metric spaces, I mean, me the, arg the arguments which we are doing can also be reformulated in a way that not the distance is really the important thing, but actually that we have a notion of open sets. Uh, so we have sets which don't, which, which, uh, yeah, where we are not falling out of the set if we move a little bit. Okay, if you don't know what a little bit means, then if you just have the notion of an open set, uh, and open sets have the properties which uh, they have in, in, in this setting, then we still can do those arguments. Uh, and that's the most general version, and that's what is called a topology. Uh, if we have open sets, we have a topology, and we are looking on topological spaces. Uh, okay, so an even more general setting is topological spaces. And that, uh, that's actually the setting in which we will consider this k. Huh? So I mean, we know what compactness means here. Okay, so we also know more or less what it means here. But then we should reformulate it in a way that we can yeah, talk about it just by using open sets. Huh? And that's what we will do in, in this context. Huh? And this characterization will be important for the proof. Huh? So uh, even if we stay in this setting here, it's good to have a reformulation of of compactness, uh, which we are going to use in the proof. Good. Okay. So let let me define. I mean, probably, maybe, maybe you have seen. Probably you have seen metric spaces and topological spaces. But nevertheless, let me recall uh, what this is and maybe the main points in this context. Uh, okay. So let me give the definition first of a of a metric space. Uh, so I mean, a, a norm. We know what a norm is. A norm gives us the length of vectors of elements in our vector space uh, and um, a metric gives us a distance between two such guys uh, which in a normed space is given by taking the norm of the difference but actually we don't need that our metric is of such a form but what we need are just very basic properties uh, and that's what we have in a metric space so metric space this is a space let's call it x and then we have a metric, which I call D. Uh, so this is a set X, X is a set. And then we have something which allows us to measure distances on this set. So this is this D. So, and this is called a metric. So together with a metric, uh, and a metric, this is a, yeah, a mapping from X cross X. So it has two arguments and, yeah, applied to its arguments, it should be a measure of the distance between those arguments, and the distance should be a positive uh, real number. Uh, it can be zero, uh, but otherwise it should be positive. Uh, okay, so this is a metric, and of course, it should satisfy a few properties. So metric satisfies the following properties. So first of all, I mean the metric really uh, should allow to separate different points. So if I have two points which are not the same, then they should really have 
a strict positive distance. Huh? So the distance between two points can be zero, but this is only the case if the two points are equal. Oh, okay, I mean, uh, the distance of, of a point to itself, of course, is zero, uh, but the metric should be strong enough, really, uh, yeah, to distinguish different points. Uh, and of, of course, that's ex also what we require for a norm. Uh, a norm of an element is zero for the zero element, but that's the only possibility. Uh, okay, then a metric should be symmetric. Uh, so this means uh, the distance between x and y is the same as the distance between y and x. Uh, so there is no direction there for all x and y in my space. And then, of course, the most important property uh, which, which we used also for the norm is the triangle inequality. I mean, that's the inequality which makes all the basic theory of convergence and all th those stuff going. Huh? And so we also need the version of this for a norm. Uh, so the triangle inequality uh, so this, this says that if I have three points then the distance between two of them is in any case smaller than the sum of the distance between the first point to the second point plus the distance between the second and the third point. Uh, so this has to be true for all x, y, and set in my space. Uh, so this is a triangle inequality if I have three points in my space, x, y, and z, and I'm looking on a distance between x and z, uh, so in my vector space or R2, this is the length of this guy, then the length of this, this distance here is, is uh, smaller than the sum of the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z. Uh, and of course, there can be, in degenerated cases, there can be equality there, uh, but usually, I mean, it, it, it's not equal. Uh, it's, it's an inequality. Um, good. Okay. And of course, if I have a normed vector space, then of course, uh, I can define a metric by taking the norm of the difference of the two vectors. Uh, so, if the setting which we usually considered up to now so V with a norm, so if this is a normed vector space, then I can define a distance, a metric, on this space D, on this space V, namely the distance between X and Y is nothing else than the norm of the difference between the, these two guys. And because I'm in a vector space, I also have the notion of a, of a difference. Huh? In a in a general metric space, I don't have any algebraic structure. Huh? There I really go down to the basic uh, notion of, of a distance huh? without being able to add things. Huh? I don't have vectors in a metric space. Good, okay, so then uh, if I have a, but if I have a normed vector space, so a vector space with a norm, uh, then I can define a metric like this. Huh? So this defines a metric on the space V. Uh, okay, and of course the, 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 the axioms for a norm are I exactly the things which translate for this into the axioms for, for a metric. Uh, okay, and then now if you're looking back, I mean what we do, the analysis we do for, for, for our normed vector spaces, convergence and all those things, I mean usually they only use the distance. Uh, so it's really, I mean, so what, what we do for the analysis we do for normed vector spaces, much of it can also be done in, in, a, in a metric uh, space. Good, okay, so that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, the metric space, uh, which is a little bit more general, but still it, it has the same feeling of as before, namely we can measure the distance between elements in our space. Okay, but now the... the uh, going over to the next generalization, uh, namely this, the, the, yeah, the, the frame of topology, this is maybe somehow a bigger leap and maybe, maybe not so clear uh, from the beginning whether this is really a good thing or not. Uh, so namely, actually, it turns out that uh, what really is important uh, for most of the arguments we are doing is that we have a notion of an open set and then many things can be reformulated in terms of open sets. 
Uh, and open sets is something <coughs> which can be defined much more general, which we can also have in situations where we don't have a, a norm or, or metric around. Uh, and still we can do some kind of analysis, and in particular we can talk about the notion of, of a compact set. Uh, okay, and so let me also recall uh, yeah, what a topology is. Uh, so this is, <coughs> this is more general than metric spaces. Every metric space gives me a topology but not every topology comes from this. So topology uh, on a set S, X on a set X. So what is this? I mean, so this is a collection of the open sets. Uh, I mean, if, if, I, if I'm in this setting, of course, I, I know what open sets are. Uh, in a general setting, I just say, okay, my topology is given by what I'm going to call open sets, and then, of course, open sets must satisfy some properties, uh, properties which, which we know from here. Okay, but what are the properties? So open sets, uh, yeah, so, so this is just a collection of subsets of my my set X, so this is a collection, let me call it tau, uh, so tau is now the topology, uh, so this is a subset of the power set of X, which are just all subsets of X. Uh, okay, so tau is a collection, uh, a family of uh, subsets um, of X, which satisfies some properties. Uh, so namely, first of all, the smallest set namely the empty set, and the biggest set, namely the, the set X itself, they should be elements in tau. Uh, so they should be open. Uh, the empty set and the whole set are open. Then we should also say how open sets go with the basic operations which we have on sets, namely union uh, and intersection. Uh, okay, and I mean, yeah, you should know, hopefully, uh, that if I take finite unions and intersections uh, for open sets, then they are still open. If I take infinite unions or intersections, then there is a kind of, of difference, and that really makes it interesting. Huh? So namely for finite, uh, for intersections, uh, I only have that I can take a finite number of intersections. Huh? So in particular, if I have two open sets, so this means u and v are in tau, they are open sets, then their intersection also is an open set. So this also has <coughs> to belong to tau. Okay, and for union, for union it's much more general, so namely any union of open sets is open. Uh, so uh, here of course I only have it for two, and then I can iterate, so I can take a finite number of, uh, of intersections. But for open ones, uh, for, <coughs> for unions, I can take an arbitrary a union. So if I have a collection of uh, open sets, let's say M, this is a collection, and this can be infinitely many, even uncountably infinitely many, then the union of all those guys in this uh, family M, so the union over all V, where V is from M, this is also in tau. Uh, so this is saying, if I have any family of open sets and I take their union, then this is also open. Uh, so what I have here, what I require for topology, uh, so this is definition of topology on a set, is that the, the finite intersection of open sets is open and uh, the union of arbitrarily many open sets is, is also open. Good, okay, so that's what I require. And then, of course, elements in this tau here, those are the elements which I call uh, open sets. Uh, and the complement of open sets are closed sets. Uh, of course, I mean, we, we have an idea what open and closed means in this setting, uh, but this is somehow a very abstract uh, version of this. Good, okay, so maybe uh, elements in tau are what we call open sets and their complement is what we call closed sets. So their complements are closed sets. Okay, and of course one can reformulate this here, uh, what I 
defined in terms of open sets, also in terms of the complement, in terms of, of closed sets. No? So there's is a kind of symmetry. Uh, but of course, I mean, if I take the complement, then the intersection goes over to the union, and the union goes over to the intersection. No? So for the closed sets, it will be the other way around with, with union and uh, intersection. Good, okay, and maybe one point is that, I mean, topology is here very general, uh, and I mean, uh, there can <coughs> be many situations, features in such a general setting, which maybe are strange from our point of view. Uh, and so usually what we have uh, are topologies which have an additional property, namely that they allow uh, to separate points. Huh? That is what is usually called a Hausdorff property. Huh? So or, or we're looking on a Hausdorff topology. Huh? Okay, so maybe I also write this down. So because what we usually have in those settings here is, is not just topology in this generality, but it has more properties. And in particular, it has a property which, which, which is very useful and, and what which we want to have is that it separates points, which is also uh, related to the fact that if I have a, a limit of, of a sequence, then this limit is uniquely determined. Huh? Okay, so, but anyhow, so let me just uh, also write down this notion, so our topologies are usually uh, Hausdorff, oh, so Hausdorff was a German mathematician, uh, okay, so who introduced a lot of this topological stuff, uh, okay, so they are Hausdorff, and this means that I can separate with open sets uh, any two points which are not uh, which which are different. Huh? So this means whenever I have two points x and y in my set x, which are different, so x is not the same as y, then I can find open sets u and v. Open sets means they are sets in my topology tau uh, such that x is in u y is in v, but the intersection between u and v is empty. Huh? So u and v, the intersection is the empty set. Huh? So the situation is, is like this. I have a point x, I have a point y, and the topology allows me to separate them. Huh? So I find an open set, a neighborhood of x, huh? and I find an open set, a neighborhood of y, which don't intersect. Huh? So if I'm in topology, if I have a topology, I cannot really talk about the points. Uh, I only can talk about open sets. So it's 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 good to to have this this property because this means I have somehow points in the background. Huh? Good. Anyhow, but uh, yeah. So that's uh, usually what 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 we have. Huh? So and and. Often, when I talk about topology, maybe I, I, I might mean a Hausdorff topology. Huh? So in our functional analytic setting, uh, usually we have Hausdorff topologies. Huh? In, in other contexts, very often you have topologies which don't have this property. Huh? So it also makes sense to consider those. Huh? But they are not really showing up here. And maybe I should, of course, also say that if I have a, a metric space, of course, I have a topology given by open sets because I mean if, if I have a, yeah, if, if I have a metric then we know what what open means huh? so I mean our usual definition of an open set is uh, that every point is an inner point which means I can uh, find about any point a small ball uh, which is still inside the set huh? and that's of course uh, the topology which we usually consider uh, in this setting huh? so maybe let me write this down here so if x and d is a metric space, then what is the topology on this? Uh, so I have to say what is an open set, but we know what this is. Uh, so then we say, of course, u is open by definition uh, if any point in the set u is an inner point, and inner point means I find a small ball about it which is still inside of you. Huh? So this means uh, I find a ball of radius r, or a radius r such that the ball about x of radius r uh, is included in you. Huh? Okay, and of course this this p of x r. This is our usual notation for for a ball with center x and radius r, and usually it's 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 the open one. Huh? So of xr 
by definition are all the y's in my set x which have distance uh, less than r from x. So the distance between x and y is less than r. Uh, so this is the open ball. Uh, okay, and then of course such g yeah, uh, this definition of open satisfies all those properties. Good, okay, so uh, and usually I mean in the normed setting of course this here was uh, exactly the distance between x, x and y, the norm of this. Huh? So usually our balls were defined like this, but of course I can also write them uh, in terms of a metric.